All right, in this video, I'm going to do three different examples of exponential functions. The first two deal with compound interest, okay? So if you have a principal of P dollars deposited in an account, paying an annual interest rate of R, so R will be expressed in decimal form, and it is compounded or paid, interest is paid, N times per year, all right? Then after T years have passed, the account will, will contain A dollars, where A is the amount given by this formula right here. Okay, so you take the principal times the quantity 1 plus interest rate as a decimal divided by the number of times per year you compound to the power of n times t. So the power is the number of times per year you compound times the number of years that have passed. And we will uh, see where this formula comes from in class, right? But in this video, I'll just show you how to use it. So make sure you have, have this down in your notes, especially what each variable means. Okay, so let's do an example of this. All right, so we have a total of $12,000 is invested at an annual interest rate of 3% compounded quarterly. We want to find the balance after three years. So let's identify what each number um, corresponds to. So a total of $12,000 is invested. So that means that $12,000 is the p-value. This 3% is our interest rate, but R, so that's going to give us our, our R value, but R has to be given as a decimal. So this is going to tell us that R is equal to 0 0.03. Okay, so we take the decimal, which is after the 3, and move it over 1, 2 places. Okay, so you divide your percentage by 100 to get the decimal. Compounded quarterly, that means 4 times per year. So that means that n, n measures how many times you compound, so n is going to be equal to 4. And then we want to find the balance in the account after 3 years. So this is the value of t. So let's go ahead and form the model itself and not use the value of t. So um, we want to be able to do it without a specific number of years as well. So our formula would be, would be a is equal to p, so 12,000, times 1 plus r over n, so 0 0.03, divided by the number of times per year, to the nt, so 4t power. So this right here would tell us our balance in the account after however many years we'd like. So then to find it um, after 3 years, we simply take 3 and replace t with 3. So that would be a of 3 equals 12,000, times 1 plus 0 0.03 over 4 to the power of 4 times 3, or 12. And then you just plug that into your calculator. And you'll get around $13,125.68. Okay, so that's about how much you'd have in the account after 3 years if this interest rate of 3% were divided by 4 and then applied at the end of each quarter. All right, I'm going to only do one example of each type today, um, so make sure you reflect at the end of each example. Okay, so pause and reflect um, about maybe what is confusing to you right here, and then rewatch the example um, if you need to. All right, so let's do our next application. So in this case here, it's going to be sort of um, uh, similar to this case right here. So here, remember n was the number of times we compound or the number of times interest is paid per year. So then an interesting question is, um, what if we have no limit? What if the number of times per year is allowed to grow without bound? And that's what continuous compound is. Okay, so you have a principal of p dollars is deposit in account paying an annual interest rate of R, expressed in decimal form, so same as the one before, only this time interest is compounded continuously. So the number of times, um, so N is the number of times, and it becomes large without bound. So basically you can think N is going to infinity. Then after T years, the account will contain A dollars, where A is the amount given by this formula right here. So we take P, instead of our base being 1 plus R over N, and the power being NT, the base is e, 
and the power is RT. So this is actually an easier formula to use. So sometimes people uh, remember it by saying PERT. Okay, so PE to the RT is when um, interest is being compounding, compounded continuously. So again, not a finite number. So when interest is not being compounded a finite number of times per year, you use this formula right here. And you don't need to use this approximation right here. I put it to remind you E um, is around 2.72. Your, um, your calculator has that value of E in it. So you would just use the E on your calculator, which is more accurate than 2.72. All right, so let's use... Uh, let's do an example here. So we have a total of $12,000 is invested at an annual interest rate of 3%. Okay, so similar to the last problem. Find the balance, oops, that should say the. Find the balance after two years if interest is compounded continuously. So we're going to use this formula right here. So A is going to be equal to, so this 12,000. 12,000 is our P. Um, annual interest rate of 3%, so that tells us that R is 0 0.03. And this is our time value, two years. And interest is compounded continuously. That's when we're going to use PERT. All right, so A is equal to 12,000. E to the RT. So 0 0.03 times T, which in this case I'm not going to do the general one, I'll just do the specific one, times 2. Okay, um, so then you plug that into your calculator. Again, use to find E to the 0 0.03 times 2, use the E button on your calculator. So you'll do E, and you'll have a caret, 0 0.03 times 2. So parentheses around that whole exponent. All right, so press pause and plug that into your calculator. So if you plug that into your calculator, you're going to get around uh, 12,742 dollars and four cents. All right, so um, those are the two different formulas for uh, the financial formulas that we'll study for um, applications of exponential functions. All right, so we're going to do one more example here, one more application and it is to uh, half-life, right? So, um, so let me define half-life. So if something decays exponentially, it's half-life, okay, so this is the definition of half-life, is the time that it takes to decay to half of the original amount. Okay, so half-life is a time. How long must, how much time must elapse until we have half of the original amount? So for example, if a sample starts off with 10 grams of a radioactive substance, and after three hours, there are half of 10, which is five grams remaining, the half-life of that substance is three hours. All right, so here's a formula. Um, again, we'll see where this comes from in class. If a quantity initially contains C, okay, so C grams or C whatever, and has a half-life of K, the amount A remaining after time T is given by this formula. So we take the initial amount times one half raised to the power of T over K. So for example, when T equals K, this becomes C times one half to the K over K, which is C times a half. So after, and that makes sense because after when T is K, that means the half-life has elapsed and so we should be taking the original amount and multiplying by a half, okay? So um, again, just one little illustration as to why this formula here makes sense. Oops. All right, so let's do an example with that. Half-life. All right, so we have a sample that contains a substance that decays exponentially and it initially has 25 grams in it. So initially has 25 grams, so that means that C is going to be 25. The half-life of the substance is 5 hours. Okay, so 5 is K. How much of the sample will remain after 12 hours? Okay, so the units of time 
need to match the units of half-life. Right, so that's how we'll use the formula. So, uh, so it's a equals c times one half to the. So let me remind you of that. So make sure you get that in your notes. So a is equal to c twenty five times one half to the power of t, which is twelve, over k, which is five. So that's how much is going to be there, and we plug that into our calculator. So press pause and make sure you can plug that into your calculator that you get the correct answer. Okay, when you plug that into your calculator, when you do 0.5 to the, you want to make sure you put parentheses around the 12 over 5. Okay, so if you plug that in, that you're going to get about 4.74 grams. And if we think about this, it, uh, so, you know, we can think about it to see if it makes sense. So we've got 12 hours, so in 12 hours, it's going to be 5, which is one half-life, plus another 5, which is another half-life. So two half-lives will have passed, plus then two more hours. So in one half-life, or after one half-life has elapsed, we're going to get 25 times a half, which is 12.5 grams left. So then after another five hours, Again, just seeing if it, you know, showing you how you can see if these make sense. After another five hours, so we have another half-life. So that's going to be, uh, so we have 12.5, so then we have half of 12.5, which is 6.25. Okay, so after 10 hours, we should have 6.25 grams. So then after another two hours, it seems feasible that we would be down to 4.74 grams. All right, so um, that's the way half-life works. Again, for after every half-life passes, you divide the amount you start with by two. Okay, all right, so those are my three examples of applications of exponential functions.